Hi, welcome back to CV in 305, the, the, the strength of materials class. Today, we are continuing our discussion about Young's moduli uh, and other uh, and uh, Hookean materials. So, just to get you the, the core idea, we had three kinds, three basic kinds of uh, properties that we defined. One was, so let me write it down. First one was Young's modulus. The symbol is E and it is sigma xx over epsilon xx, which is sigma yy over epsilon yy, which is sigma zz over epsilon zz. This is called Young's modulus. And typical values are listed here. Okay, these are just to give you some guidelines. So for rubber, like a, like a rubber band, the Young's modulus is about 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 GPA. GPA means gigapascals. Remember I told you that yield strength is in megapascals. You want to understand that uh, moduli are typically in gigapascals. So you can go through, you can see rubber is about 0 0.1. It increases by the time you get to wood, different kinds of wood, it's about 11. It's about 11. So same with, so that's about quite a lot that is um, wood is about uh, 100 so wood is 1000 times stiffer than rubber right it's probably more than 1000 times right 100 1000 10000 times sorry 10000 times stiffer than rubber okay so you can see it's actually it's actually two or three times stiffer as you go aluminum is about 69 to 70 gpa you are now getting up there right so by the time you get to steel see glass is about 90 gpa okay so we can go further down Bronze is brass and bronze are about 120. Titanium is 120. You can keep going down. Notice that all of this is in the is in the 30 to 100 range, something like that. Ah, then you get to steel. Steel is 200 GPA. Steel is pretty stiff. And I want you to understand. Don't confuse stiffness with strength. Strength means when will it fail? Stiffness means how much will it deform in a uh, in a recoverable or reversible way? Okay, so let's go further down. You go you go down. Beryllium 280, molybdenum 329, diamond is 1220. It's one of the stiffest materials. I'm not talking about hardness here. I'm talking about stiffness. So diamond is about 10 times stiffer, maybe no five times stiffer than steel. Stiffer. Graphene, which is the thin graphite layer, is about five times stiffer than steel. Okay, this is stiffness and not strength. Okay, so that's Young's modulus. The second thing we defined was Poisson's ratio. Which is, the symbol is nu, which is minus sigma xx, sorry, minus Epsilon yy over epsilon xx under simple tension. And usually this is in the range of about 0.3. If you have to guess, you can guess 0.3 and you will be reasonably correct. If you get 0, that means no lateral shrinkage. If you get 0.5, that means you will actually get incompressible and if you get negative that means it means that it will be lateral expansion and some foams have that property if you pull them they will expand sideways you know the book is kind of bizarre but you can you can get those kinds of things in some foams so that's Poisson's ratio the third item that we looked at was Shear modulus, uh, 
and this symbol for that is G and this is defined as sigma xy xy over gamma xy which is sigma yz over gamma yz which is sigma zx over gamma zx for isotropic material all these three things are equal and it turns out that there is a very interesting relationship so for isotropic materials G is related to nu and E through G is equal to E over 2 times 1 plus nu. That is a really interesting relation. So, let us see what that would mean for steel. So, steel let us say uh, E is 200 GPA, nu is about 0 0.3. So, G will be 200 divided by 2 times 1 plus 0.3 which is 100 over 1.3. That is about 70 or something like that, 70 GPA. Just gives you a rough idea how much is the shear modulus. Okay, because shear modulus, Young's modulus and things like that are related. Now we can write the full Hooke's law in terms of just two parameters, E, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio. Okay, if you do that, you will get this nice looking matrix. Where is that? There it is. This is the matrix. So I want you to understand this corner is all normal strains, normal stress axial stream and this corner is all shear stress shear stream got the idea right so this is the whole idea behind uh, this this property and you can notice that i can pull out the Mo the Young's modulus outside because it's a uh, it's the same for the whole for all these things and the shear modulus is he hidden here one plus nu over e that is one over two g okay so for example <clears throat> for plane stress we know that sigma z z is zero. Sigma yz is 0, sigma xz is 0. So, I can eliminate sigma zz, sigma yz, sigma xz. So, I can write it as a 3 by 3 matrix. So, it will look like this epsilon xx, epsilon yy, epsilon xy equals 1 over e, 1 minus nu, 0, minus nu, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1 plus nu times sigma xx, sigma yy, sigma xy. This is for plane stress only. So, in many cases, this is a very useful one, but you can always use this full matrix. It is not a big deal. You just have to substitute the right values and figure out what is going on. So, as far as uh, Hooke's law goes for isotropic materials. This is the relationship between strains and stresses and we will use this a lot. But before we go, we want to make sure we understand what is meant by Young's modulus. So, let us look at an example. I have a steel bar okay, whose cross sectional diameter, cross sectional area is 10 millimeter squared. Okay. So, that is a fairly sizable steel bar, it is about that big. The question is, let us say I apply a force on this steel bar like this of 10,000 Newtons. So, what is the stress? So, we want to find out how much will it elongate. 
Let's see. First step, find stress, which is f over a, that is sigma x x, assuming x axis is like that, sigma x x turns out to be f over a, which is 10,000 divided by 10 millimeter square, that is 1000 Newton per millimeter square. That's 1000 MPa. That's pretty high. Unless it's a really high strength steel, this steel will fail. So let us assume this is a high strength steel. Like Marajan steel or something like that. First thing always, before you plunge in and do calculations, you have to ask yourself whether the numbers make sense. So in this particular case, you are already up there. You know, if you want to take a 10 mm bar and you want to, if you want to put 10,000 newtons on it, you are going to apply a force of 1000 MPa. If you want to put a 1000 newtons on it, a 1000 newtons is about 100 kilograms. So if you want to put a 100 kilometers on it, kilograms on it, you have 100 newton, newton per millimeter squared, you are at 100 MPa and that's reasonable. Okay, so let's say it's 1000 MPa and you are using Maradi steel. By the way, it doesn't matter what quality of steel you make. Its strength may be very high, it is very difficult to change its modulus. So whether it's maraging steel or whether it's mild steel, the modulus will always be roughly around 200, 200 GPA. So how will we use this? So in principle, we can go back up here, put sigma xx is 1000 or uh, sigma xx is 1000 MPa, this is 0, that's 0, that's 0, that's 0, that's 0 and we can calculate. If you do that, you will get something very, very simple. So use matrix, use Hooke's law to find strain which is epsilon xx is sigma xx over E which is 1000 MPa divided by 200 GPa, right? 1000 MPa is 1 GPa, so 1 over 200. So this is 1 over 200 uh, <coughs> and it's unitless, okay? Which turns out to be um, 1 over 200 times 100, that is half percent, 0.5 percent. So the strain is 1 over 200, which is 0.5 percent. So let us say it is 10 meters long. So original length, ten meters. So how much will it elongate? Delta L over L must be uh, 1 over 200, which implies delta L is 10 meters over 200, which is 1 over 20th of a meter, which is um, 5 centimeters. So it will extend about 5 centimeters if you put 10,000 newtons on this and if it is 10 meters long and that's a pretty long rod. Okay, and 5 centimeters is huge. I want you to understand that. Okay, typically maraging steel, you even maraging steel, it, it will extend a lot. I mean, this is just an idea to fit for you, for you to see how it may work fine in terms of strength, but it may elongate too much and hence you may be, you may not be able to use it. So even though there's maraging steel in principle, I mean, I'm not saying that the calculation, the numbers are exactly correct, but approximately, okay. Even though it was able to take 1000 megapascals without failure, strength failure, but it may elongate too much. And so you have to worry about that also. And that's where we are headed next. Thank you.